Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, there may be some people that are joining us, but I'm going to just jump right in. Uh, my name is Sarah Otsley, and I'm the Writing Across Media Facilitator at Vermont Studio Center, which means I manage the writing program here. I'm going to introduce our reader right now. Kamaria Shepard is a poet and painter currently teaching in um, San Pedro, California. Her work explores themes of race, womanhood, femininity, memory, and ident identity as an African-American woman in the U.S. and beyond. She writes about her work and thoughts around its processes by way of short story, personal narrative, and poem. Audio of her poem, In a House, is currently on view as part of Newton's Newton Arts City Speaks for Sonic Installation in Pasadena, California. Kamaria earned an MFA in painting and drawing from UCLA in 2018 and a BFA in painting concentrating in literary arts from RISD um, in 2015. Kamaria is the 2018 UCLA recipient of the Toby Devon Lewis Fellowship. And she was also the Swan Fellowship recipient during her, 20, her September 2018 residency at the Vermont Studio Center. Um, it is always a pleasure to welcome someone back who's been a resident here at VSC. Um, and I just also wanted to note that this reading is, um, is part of our, our Writers on the Rise reading series, which is sponsored by the Rana Jaffe Foundation. And I'm um, very grateful that we are able to have um, their support in hosting um, a featured monthly reading. Without further ado, I would love to turn it over to Kamaria Shepard. Thank you for being here. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm very thankful to everyone in the Vermont Studio Center for having me back and being a part of this reading series. I just wanted to start giving um, just a further background on my writing process. So um, as I'm an interdisciplinary artist, um, I work in painting, printmaking, installation, and poetry, and these processes feed each other and um, have become very integral in my process as an artist. And my work is very biographical and relates to my economy in and out of the studio within a political framework that ascribes to my relationship as an African-American woman. Repetition is used frequently in racism religion and the experiences of black women and people are repeated generationally. Some repeated words and or themes are man, grandmother and black. I also allude to African American history, past and present while questioning the black presence within white institutions. Thus, I will begin into the layers of my mind through this collection of poetry. So I will start with some earlier poems and then go into some more recent poems. Shopping task. Hi, I'm going to the stove to buy the same groceries that I bought last week. I wake up to watch her Wake up at the wake. She is asleep, gone crazy. I am going to the stove to buy the same groceries that my mother bought and her mother bought. Bring them to her, bring them here. Mama brought them, made groceries and then went to take him a bath in a ball of water by the sink, ball the water by the stove, 12 minutes, 12 years. The Bible says you are grown, go fix a plate and fix your hair. Girl, take off that red, when watching a menstrual show and when having a menstrual show, me where it says in the Bible, how am I being punished by God? 
I can't, girl. I have gone to the stove. This next poem is titled, Ha Recollection. Y'all ain't coming to the house. You know the house. The one with your relatives you never see. The ones that never see you or acknowledge you. Y'all ain't coming to the house with the bed that held all of them together. Siblings and all said it wasn't right for boys to be in the same room with girls, even brothers. That's why her children each had separate beds. Y'all ain't come into the house, the outhouse the old head spoke of, how they didn't have basic plumbing and slept on a slept on a mud floor with just walls, no ceiling looking at the stars every night and how the rain seeped in. Y'all ain't come into the house. Her mother told her not to have a lot of babies by a man. They don't treat you the same and definitely not any better. Don't you marry a dumb man, but you can be a dumb woman. It is honored, it is recommended. Y'all ain't coming to that house. You are too pretty to be so mean. Stop that talk, just be quiet and sit pretty. Y'all ain't coming to that house. I was 29 in that photo and skinny and my hair was long. After I had left that house, I got married. I wasn't going to stay there and get whipped by my daddy. Y'all ain't come into that damn house. Doesn't look how she used to, doesn't answer how she used to doesn't smile lest she has to. Y'all ain't come into that damn house. Doesn't try lest she has to. Doesn't write lest he has to. Doesn't cry like a baboon. Doesn't whine by blue moon. Graffiti means scratch. Just a similar one in the same place. She dyed her hair blue in the dream, in her mirror that mirrored her dream. The mirror of her dream, the one where her grandmother showed up and she could feel her hovering over her in a white space of spiritual intelligence telecommunicating, I can see her with my head, but not my eyes. I can feel her presence, brushing against the hairs on my thighs, like those sudden shocks on your skin when you touch something too fast. A reminder of life, an unknown him on top of me, pressing me into a dream I can't remember and don't want to, I can't scream, seven, and behind the sheets of the sheer canopy drapes. My grandmother's eyes were translucent through the threads in her dirty blonde, older but younger than I knew, black woman, 53, coils curling around what little of her face I could find in the hot of the night, in the cool of her soul, lukewarm, wasn't wearing that green suit. They put her in those shoes. Her hair is the same, her lips between. Condoleezza rice red in the color God made them. Brown, brown black, her grandfather brown black. Mulatto, soil, clay, red soil that grows watermelons in the summer 
that made my grandfather, her husband, preacher, fat, black, and something for white people to laugh at in the summer or leave to hang, said they put boys in dresses to hide them from the clan, keep them from burning, white people too evil. That's why she thought black people were better than white people, why she was proud to be black, married the darkest man in the country of this country from a family known for dark women with long hair, anyone from there can look at my body. I ride down that road. They know who I am, who I look like, who I am named. Hated the white in her, hated the light in her, told me I had to delight in me, God, and some white men to be ashamed of. Stop texting me in my head before I knew what a text was or how to write text or to proofread my words with spell check or write a text. Just one more second, just one more sacred. Yellow roses on her grave, like Santa Anna, her favorite daisies with fuzzy yellow faces, like buttons to noses. Yellow dot candies that you pull from white paper like stamps. Hot pink faux suede blazer, wear every fourth month, would have worn to the yellow face cousin's wedding. Just a different one in the same place. Her body hung like a crucifix, bordered on the white wall, cross like clan, bought me dainty gold-plated cross earrings, a thin chain necklace too, to match, light a match, light pink roses too, sandals she wanted to wear the summer before, stick draped on both ends of her hidden arms, cross like thorns, whatever, what, are you doing over there? Combing, combing out, my hair removing hair, combing that hair, combing that air, removing texture, how to do braids, call them plaits, removing tether, cost $75 for an hour, press your back, press your hair, press your clothes, Press your buttons. Press the yellow lipstick against your lips and make them matte. Thick and sweet, like scented markers. Banana, making your teeth a more yellow white. I should have drawn her again, marked her breaths a little to the left, kept them sagging, but with the same U shape. Draw all women's breaths, dye her face blue, with lips to match. So now I'll read from the work poems. Gifts gave it for them streets. I have gifts. I have gifts of Africans. I have gifts of Americans. I have gifts of the ground, off the ground, smelled from that hound, that been hound, hounded from and hung from, hung up the tree, colored by painted pig with pigments of the earth, from pig skins off the road towards the ghetto. I have gifts of love, I have gifts from God, I have gifts, I have gifts from your soul, touching mine and breaking away, like light on glass, cracking from the big brown body, betrayed and whipped, called it, for I have no one to gift, no one to appreciate and grow the gentlest of gents, a gentle man of 
gentle woman hands, oh, gentle man, oh, gentile man, oh man, oh man, I think he can. The next poem is called Wallet. She unbuttoned her purse and unbuttoned her shirt for that child to milk her tit for a ticket of life and breath from breasts that way with nipples that way pointing in different directions pave from different points but from the same exit. So she can do everything except sit and wait to have a fit. Baby, my baby, you know, this is fit, that is fit. For a queen, yes, all those queens, when we have another one of our kin to die in the street, dying with feet, down and hand up, flat on the ground and roll around to let that fire out and to let that fit in. Yes, all those that fit in, sit in while she about to have a fit with that little polite white tooth fitted in her mouth, that little mite tooth that just growed up and start cutting, cutting through greens cutting through pangs of pains, gutting her gums like a blade through a catfish fresh before fry, Friday's dinner, the weekend at our favorite cousin's cousin's house with all the fixins and fifteens, thinking about fixing my man's plate and that gon' matter, cause it always do. Just like little white things, they always do. They stand up out her mouth like flags ready to mount, like men ready to lead. Lead in her skin, they hear, she hear. It fit here, so she can cry about nothing, maybe something somewhere else, if it were somebody else all day, all night, all life. And this poem is titled, she said that too. She said that too. When he laid her across the bed and wanted to claim her and braid her hair into his, he wasn't thinking about how he got her, why she didn't finish her sweet tea, just sitting there lonely next to her great chin. He just called her ma'am and opened her door to the next floor to the next concord grapes on the floor for her people. She didn't know. She said that too, but she didn't ask. Not for this, not like this, but for it to end. Well, we have kids that fight to live for the purpose to fight to life. Come on by and don't turn blind or turn a blind eye or eye to her prize pies and shimmered lies with eyeshadow dust mixed with eye matter. It don't matter, but it do. She said that too. Then that skirt flounced and she gone away. The final poem is titled, Mr. Big Bad Son of July. She can't go on, no, no more, not like this. Mix them grits like this. She ain't got no job or no man. A kiss. What's she gonna do? Mix the butter like this. Carry on like this. 
with no girdle in church, no, no more. In that hot, humid, Mr. Sun of July, it's 1 p.m. when everybody gets in to hide from that big bad sun, Mr. Big Bad Sun of July, because he's too fly to just sit in the sky. He cooks his subjects till they sweet with sweat and drip his name from the chocolate lace skin. Seated next to him, his memory, his word, he ain't bleeding, no, no more. Not nobody that don't stay in his shine. They know better than all that, but do she. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for Sue Trainer for being here. Um, we're going to shift to a short question and answer session. So, um, Sue, if you have a question, feel free to um, unmute and ask it directly to Kamaria, or you can um, put it in the chat, and I'm happy to ask her uh, it to her directly. Um, I'm interested in hearing about uh, integrating the, the repetition um, in the work and um, how, how the drafting of the poems comes to be and how you're incorporating both the repetition and the rhyme. Um, and I'm wondering if, if part of your process is, is reading the poems out loud as, as they're being drafted. Um, and anything else you'd like to share about, uh, because I was, I, and I really appreciated how um, you introduced your work um, and, and framed that the repetition was an important part of the, the, the poems themselves. Um, because I can, I can hear, um, I can hear how considered and also where, also where the line breaks are. I think, I think you were also reading line breaks, if, if I'm correct, but I'm not sure about that. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I was wondering if you want to speak to any of, any of that um, further. Yes, um, so repetition is uh, very important in my experiences as a person, and I think in experiences of the African-American community, um, it just relates to me a lot in thinking about going through constant struggles with racism and being a woman and in this country and dealing with how you're looked at and thinking about how you present yourself to the world and how that can change your experiences. And that's something that I've played around with personally and I've seen other people in the African-American community explore. And that has gone into my practice as a visual artist in terms of really looking at um, what I'm drawing from. I do work from a lot of self-portraiture and just studying face and the features and looking at pattern and really working within mark making and looking at details of things and seeing the changes in something that is repeated and how that's the same and how it's different. And I think that that connects to my writing and that I think about memory and deal with kind of work through different experiences with mark making and then with writing, dealing with words and line and phrases and dealing with particular meanings of words and how words are similar and kind of being playful with 
meaning when writing and how things look on the page is important to me and how that's repeated and also language and how words sound when they're spoken. And so the repetition of that. And so when making my poems, I do um, do a lot of, um, I'll look at um, previous writings or I'll look at my artwork and then I'll sit with it for a while and I'll write and then I'll speak things or read what I've written and bounce ideas back and forth. And so it's a very back and forth process and one informs the other. Sometimes I'll work from a poem and start a drawing or start an art piece. And sometimes it'll be where I'll look at an artwork that I'm finished or even in the process of making and then start a poem. Yeah, I was struck by um, what you said about how the repetition in the poems in the, in the literary arts can be um, similar or metaphorical to, or adjacent or parallel to mark making, like repeated mark making, marks on a drawing or a painting. Um, and, and I found that, 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 that correlation to be really, to be like, you know, really fascinating. Um, I, I, I'm struck by the, uh, because I've only dabbled in a little bit of like collage type work myself. And, um, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm a straight writer, <laughs> um, and that, um, my, I don't have that flexibility of being able to switch between the two, the, the different languages. I feel like visual art and, and writing are kind of like different languages. Um, and I'm wondering how you learned or when you learned to, um, to be able to move so fluidly between the, the disciplines um, or if that it just feels like intuitive and natural to you um, in, in, the, in the making of your process. Because to me, it seems like very freeing or like like a form of freedom to be able to move so 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 easily in between different different disciplines. Yes, I think there's um, a freedom that exists for me being able to move between both. I think that um, that allows me to breathe between making art and writing. I I got into combining both of them more so when I was in graduate school. Oh, Kamari, I think we just lost you for a second. Okay, great. Yeah, I was always working um, in writing in separate classes, doing workshops. And when I was in graduate school, I started wanting to actually incorporate that with my visual art. And that was when it became much more intentional. And I was actually um, making artwork that um, was from poems or made or had poems incorporated into visual work. Um, yeah, it just became a much more intentional uh, back and forth, but I think it was always there on some level. Yeah. Um, before we go, I was wondering if you wanted to say anything about the work that's behind you and in the backdrop um, that we've been able to enjoy during your reading. Um, yes. So see um so these are four kind of um quick paintings that i did just using a very intuitive process i was thinking about um poems and poems that i wanted to write when i was making these and i used pastels ink red ink 
in pastels and I did some writing into it and kind of thinking about the form and writing and working for myself in the mirror and working from images of myself. And yeah, just thinking about using color and pattern. Yeah, I, um, are, you, are you working on a body of work to in, for an installation or a group show or a solo exhibition um, right now? Um, if, I wondered if you wanted to expand on that. And um, if you're also uh, working on a collection of poems, if you wanted to talk about uh, of your manuscript in progress. Yes, so I'm working on a um, series of artworks dealing with the body and clothing, dress, and having um, writing from poems centered into those um, designs. Um, that's something that I'm working on for um, a show for um, next year. And um, also just working on a series of poems just dealing with the same themes of African-American womanhood. And um, now I've just been focusing on making poems, thinking about um, things that are happening just in the news and in the Black community and just socially um, being aware of what's going on so much now um, in the writing. Uh, I don't have a particular book or anything coming up, but I am um, having things in mind. Well, I'm, I'm excited to hear that um, we might see more of your work in a show next year. And um, I think it, it must be nice to have, you know, a deadline with a, a space in mind um, to work towards. And um, yeah. Anything else you'd like to share before, before we close for the evening? Um. No, I don't have anything else. Just uh, thank you for the space. I really enjoy being able to share my work and talk about it. Yeah, no, me too. I'm excited to keep following your work. Um, and um, I look forward to hearing, uh, yeah, send me, send me a note when your show, is it, is it gonna be in Los Angeles? Um, um, I think it may be in Minneapolis. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So wait, I have one more question. How are you incorporating the poems into the garment or the clothes? Is it going to be woven or printed on? Um, so I have um, on. Uh, digitally printed and then work with the fabric to make the dress sheet afterwards. Oh, that sounds so cool. Yeah. I, I've always, um, I've always thought that this, this is going to sound very adjacent and very odd, but I've always thought that the t-shirt is the most uh, visible art form um, as like, as like a, because basically it's like a, you're a walking human walking around and you're like a billboard. <laughs> um, so whatever gets put on the t-shirt, it just seems like it's like, the one of the most visible wearable art forms um, is like the t-shirt. So I love thinking about um, garments as like, as, po as poems or poems being part of like woven into the fabric of the clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That project sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm really liking working with it. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for being here this evening, Kamaria Shepard. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.